All right, we are live on video. Stand by for audio. All right, good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So this evening, I have another new co-host for you. Yes, we're digging into the health demographic once again. And this gentleman is actually part of a little partnership. Uh, he's got a, a wife by the young lady name of Rachel. And, but more importantly, into him, because she's not here with us today, this gentleman comes from a good friend of mine by the shout out to James for getting us connected. Uh, but this guy graduated from medical school, medical school in 2008. That's right. We're bringing you a doctor. He's completed his radiation oncology residency training in 2013. So yes, obviously we're actually bringing you an oncologist uh, from a very, very busy cancer center. But more importantly, um, he's been practicing like a primal paleo combination lifestyle since 2011. We've talked a lot about these areas of health and wellness and as far as lifestyle demographics. And uh, clearly, they become quite passionate about the connection between diet and lifestyle and health and particularly how it relates to cancer. So Rachel and this gentleman uh, created a blog by the name of OurHealthHabit.com to share their perspective and outlook on building healthy lifestyles as a family. So without further ado, we are bringing the doctor on the air. Welcome, Dr. Brendan Prendercast. Welcome to the Hi. show, sir. Hey, Scott. Thanks for having me. I, I'm glad we finally got to connect up. I think, uh, again, shout out to James, uh, my CrossFit buddy. Uh, actually, I'm rocking my CrossFit gear right now because I literally was yeah. working out about an hour ago and I said, you know what? It goes with the health and fitness theme. Let's go with this. So, uh, yeah. So, how long have you known James? Um, that's a good question. Um, I met James um, my freshman year of high school, perhaps even a little bit before that, but wow. he was basically my best friend all through high school. Um, and uh, we went to college together at the uh, University of Notre Dame. Go Irish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, old, old rivalry of mine. I'm a Penn Stater. Okay. Well, we'll forgive you <laughs> that. Well, you know, it's not, not anymore. You know, the Big Ten thing. Yeah. Yeah. So James and I were together high school, college. Um, and, uh, and then I went down to medical school at the University of Florida in Gainesville and um, spent four years there. And after... Um, finishing medical school, I actually reconnected with James um, out in Denver, where he was living at the time. And so I did my first year of training, what's called the internship. It's mm. not nearly, not quite as, um, uh, as cool as it looked on Grey's Anatomy, but um, <laughs> I did the, uh, did the internship portion there in Denver. I got to reconnect with James and his wife, Kelly, and then um, did the rest of my training down in Birmingham, Alabama. So. Nice. Well, that's funny because that's how, like, James and I got connected because I literally think it was actually at a CrossFit class because I was coaching it. And I think I was rocking one of my Colorado hats. Yeah. So, yeah. and I think I, ha I always have, I mean, this is my own branded canteen, but I always have uh, canteens with stickers on them. I'm a sticker yeah. nut from live. I lived in Colorado. I used to ski out there, mountain bike, everything. So we just started geeking out on that. And I mean, obviously him being an engineer, he's an intelligent fellow. Um, and actually he and I have crossed over one of my biggest clients is in the HVACR industry as far as heating, air conditioning, everything else. And they do building design. It's just funny how circles overlap. Right. And it's funny because I think he brought you up finally because I think he said, hey, man, I turned a buddy of mine onto your show and I think you might want to eventually connect up with him. And he said, because some of the, I, my health demographic shows for this podcast really started getting deeper and deeper. Like you just started, you actually just mentioned today that you listened to the recent one that aired from uh, Dr. Nasha from Colorado. <laughs> and I mean, how knowledgeable was that girl? Oh my Wonderful. God. I mean, I have to go back and listen to it again because there was so much stuff dropped. <laughs> so, and obviously now we're with you. So yeah, yeah. You guys created ourhealthhabit.com and I love obviously, because I'm a branding guy, you know, I would talk about this. I love the theme. It's simple. It's clean. And I love the fact that it totally connects with, because this is not just you. This is you and Rachel. This right. is a partnership. And how long ago did you launch this uh, blog? Uh, we launched it in, uh, I believe it was September, October of last year. Uh, okay. So it was, it was uh, it's pretty recent. And here we go. Food, fitness, family. Yeah. That's kind of the, uh, the sort of tagline, um, the theme. And um, Beautiful lady, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, oh, I see you're, you're doing the, uh, the screen oh, share. Oh, yeah, I got the screen share now. <laughs> Great. Um, well, you know, on the first page of the, well, that's a little bit about yeah, us. Yeah, hit the about us. 
if, if you go to the home and then you go to the bottom um, where it has sort of the, uh, the, uh, the featured posts there. Ooh, you're a fellow Vibram fan is, or is that just a random photo? Yeah, yeah, no, um, we are. We, we got into yes. that back in, and I've sort of went that way and I've kind of converted away from it. Um, but this introduction section here yeah. um, sort of tells a story. Um, and so, you know, your, uh, your readers, your listeners, if they check out the blog, they can kind of hear how we got started. But um, well, I like right here because I've actually read your whole section right here. In the end, we each, we each lost weight and got into great shape for the wedding and the honeymoon. So I, I, I highlighted that just because obviously a lot came up before that. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we hinted in your bio about, oh, these is hot keywords right now. Like everybody's like, oh, they see me eating and they say, oh, are you a big paleo guy? Or are you a primal guy? Or now the latest things is, because I've experimented with fat adaptation and everything else is, oh, are you a keto? Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. And you do fellow OCR racing, obstacle course racing. Uh, I've done Spartans and Tough Mudders and everything else. So we're vibing here. By the way, I did last year the Spartan Super here at Blue Mountain in the Pocono Mountains, which I found out later was actually one of the hardest ones because of the terrain, which I thought is funny because that's our local mountain. Uh-huh. Um, but I did it in the Vibram Five Fingers. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I uh, I've done. Uh, in fact, the, the reason I got away from them is nothing to do with uh, the, the the Vibram Five Fingers. In fact, I'm a big fan of them. But when I did a couple of the Spartan runs, when there was some really thick mud, the shoe would actually suck right off my foot. Oh, wait, um, did you have a single strap? Um, I had this one with like a. Uh, it, it didn't have a strap. It was like more of a cinch, you know, you, you yeah. tighten it down. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's the one that I have now. It's like a drawstring and you pull yeah, the buckle yeah, in. Right. Those and held up. They held yeah, up they, though. They held up. And the other thing was I also felt like the drainage in it. I felt like when I went through even water, not mud, I was like running in a water balloon and I Ooh. switched over to a brand called Innovate. Um, oh, Innovates are huge. Yeah. A lot of people wearing those. And um, James is a big fan of his Innovates. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and they have a great, and they, they just drain really well. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of in this, uh, you know, in fact, the other thing to mention here was, uh, right when you and I connected was about exactly four weeks ago today, um, Hmm. we connected from email from James and, um, I actually just had knee surgery done. uh, I know. Right. What was that all about? You know, old injuries, um, (laughs) football, uh, fencing. I did fencing in college. Um, now all the sports, OCR, basketball. Whoa, 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 hold on. We got to pause. We got to pause. Yeah. yeah. You could get seriously injured from fencing. I'm not saying that's not an aggressive sport. You guys are stabbing, (laughs) you guys are stabbing each other, but yeah. What'd you get run through or what? (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's rough on the knees. You know, it's all the knee, the front knee when you're fencing, you're lunging. Oh yes. You're lunging. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that front leg took a beating. Um, okay. So anyhow, um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in, um, I'm kind of whole, I haven't run and the last run I did was a, a race called the uh, Savage Race, yep. um, which is a East Coast kind of obstacle course. Yeah, run. It's a good point. It is more of like an East Coast brand. Yeah. You don't see a lot of it on the West Coast, but right. I tell people all the time, like you should start with not the Tough Mudder or not. And actually it's, there's something easier than the Savage. And then I tell people to go to the Savage yeah. and then if you're looking for the group event, you go Tough Mudder and then you level up to like a Spartan. Would you agree yeah. with that or? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think the other thing with Spartan to know is they do offer a, a 5k distance or a th- they call it the Spartan sprint. So yeah, that was my I, first one. I don't think that that's a bad one to start with. The first one that got us into it was actually the warrior dash. That's which, it. Yeah. Yeah. Which now, now that I've done many of them and I think my wife and I have done probably 20 of these in the last two and a half years of the dash specifically. Oh no. Of, of, of any OCR race. Oh, okay. Uh, we, we do quite a bit of them in Florida. There's one almost every weekend. Uh, <laughs> you know, we can go anywhere. You have the weather for it. Yes, we do. Um, but the warrior dash for those listeners who are like wanting to, what's a good one to get started with that. That's a good beginner race. It's only a 5k. It's only got like 12 or 15 obstacles and it's, um, it's pretty doable. Admittedly, I've never done one. I, my first OCR was, I think a tough mutter actually. Yeah. But well, you jumped right in, man. You're <laughs> literally, and it was oh, muddy. Yeah. yeah. But here, hold on. You love this as a health guy <laughs> up here. There's a fa- like probably 10 minutes from where I live. There's a famous, huge Turkey farm called Jandal turkeys, like okay. J A I N D L. Anyway, Tough Mudder rented their farmland to do it on. Right. Tough, keyword, mudder. Right. Mudder <laughs> on turkey fields, meaning yeah, that, that the much. manure. <laughs> Dude, not cool. Yeah. Bad idea. There was a lot of people I found out later, like going to the hospital for yeah. issues. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I'd rather come to Florida and do another right. Tough Mudder again. Right. <laughs> I mean, unless you guys have Florida and Floridian 
Uh, you know, turkey we, farms. I don't know. No turkeys, but uh, you got plenty of cow cow pastures. <laughs> okay, I'm all right with that. You know, I, I grew up on a farm. I'm cool with the. I can handle the cow manure. The turkeys, eh? Did not enjoy that at all. So, but so anyway, knee surgery. You get all. You know, you're all rebuilt now. Are you bionic? Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> one step closer. Yeah. One okay. Step. Now, what they do? Just a basic orthoscopic, or yeah, yeah. I had some, you know, uh, meniscus damage, some cartilage damage. So, um, you know, it probably means I need to do a little less running <laughs> and jumping. Um, I, I admittedly, other than OCRs, I don't do as much running. I mean, yeah, me li- lighter running and CrossFit stuff like that. But I mean, I save it for the OCRs. I used to do yeah. half marathons, marathons. I don't have anywhere. I don't have yeah. any to pain anymore. No, I'm with you. And in fact, that's a good point. I, um, it's kind of something I'm planning a, a blog post on uh, some point in the future is, especially this lesson I've learned with my knee here is, you know, you only get one set of tires, you know, mm. you, in, you know, these, uh, your knees, your joints, your ankles, uh, you know, running, I think is, is probably one of the um, least useful um, exercises to do, right? You're a crossfitter. I'm a, I'm a, I, I'm a former, I don't want to say former because I still do occasional workouts, but I don't go to a box or anything anymore. Yeah, but what's a CrossFit? Always a CrossFit. If you know what right. you're doing, you don't need a box. No, I'm, bu- no, I'm building my own box in my garage. Yeah, I mean. that's what I have. I have a squat <laughs> rack. I have a pull-up bar. I have a row machine. I have oh. a GHD machine. And then, you know, that's, that's all I need. You got me beat. You got me yeah. beat. I don't have the row machine and the GHD. I was with you up until that point. Do you have a box for box jumps? I do. Yep. Oh, damn it. All right. All right. Well, the all other right, thing, so- I, wish, I wish I could show it on the YouTube that, um, and actually James um, sort of helped envision how I was going to build this. Um, so you've done the Spartan races, and you know how they have these rigs where you're hanging from like, um, oh yeah, Spartan bar. is all about destroying your grip strength. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we built a uh, a little mini rig in our garage. Ooh. So we basically have from the rafters, you know, every what is it, you know, uh, twenty four inches, six uh, sixteen inch offset at least, yeah, or you have the big ones, you know, every yeah. and it works out. So it's it's the perfect distance between, so you can swing from one element to the next. Oh. Um, yeah, so it's kind of cool. Now, hold on. Are you doing the hard one where it's an ace, you know, descending and then ascending? Uh, no, we don't, we don't uh, quite have that. The monkey yeah. bars like that? Yeah. I hate yeah. that. <laughs> oh, man. So I'm glad I'm not the only geek about this stuff. Again, no, ladies no. and gentlemen, when you're listening, we're geeking out about OCR right now. But uh, the point is, is get outside and, and do something to challenge yourself. I think that's the biggest theme we're getting out of all this, right? You don't have to be a CrossFitter. You don't have to no. be a Spartan. Um again, back to kind of your core brand here, right? It's, you want to be healthy, you want to be fit, you want to be able to do things as a family, or in your case, as a couple. Right, right. Yeah, yeah and that's one of the most uh, important things um, that I think we, we've realized is, um, you know, it's a lot, of, it's a lot easier to, to uh, develop healthy habits when you have a partner, a partner in crime to go through it with. And, um, you know, I think that's been the failing of a lot of people I've talked to. Um, they've, uh, not necessarily a personal family, but that's, that's been an obstacle, a stumbling block is that they want to do it. They want to get healthier. They want to eat this way. They want to exercise more, but their spouse or partner, you know, isn't interesting. Hmm. And it, in fact, it is harder. Yeah. And that's really kind of actually been, um, one of the elements Rachel's, um, run into in her health coaching, um, business is that, you know, there, there are people, her, some of her clients, they, they, they want to do it. And, they're not getting buy-in from their, their spouse or partner. And that makes it, uh, makes it challenging. So I've been health coaching since my firefighting days. Um, I don't know what level she's at, but it's been always been part of my passion, right? I don't do it a ton with a lot of people. It's very specialized these days. I got, I have too much other stuff going on, but I, obviously my brand, everything is health and fitness as well. Right. So one tip that I learned from a great mentor and my business coach, and this applies actually in life is you can't help everyone. It's the first part of it. Second part of it is the worst people to help are your closest, the friends and the family. <laughs> so the third part is in the end, focus on yourself, set the example, show the results. And when people are ready, they will come. <laughs> I was like, okay. I mean, that might be exactly verbatim, but it's pretty close to what, they t- what he taught me. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. I mean, my dad's a type two diabetic and I'm Mr. Health Nut. But I mean, I've gotten him down to one medication due to some things that I've helped influence, but it took way too long <laughs> yeah, yeah. to influence this change. Well, that's great. I mean, I think that's a good, you know, just to, to summarize that, really, I agree, you know, live by example. And that's, that was really the impetus for us even starting this blog. I mean, the health and fitness thing has been a passion of both me and my wife hmm. um, since probably about 2011 when we uh, kind of took the plunge and went paleo primal. 
Um, and people just kept asking us, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And we said, well, we ought to, we ought to just start a blog and, you know, just share our thoughts. So now was it the wedding that was and the honeymoon stuff? Was that like the initial trigger really? Well, or that's what, that's what the first time in my life that I ever thought, Oh boy, I want to, you know, get in shape. Um, you know, I was always an athlete, you know, but it was the first time I thought, well, I better, uh, you know, look good in the tux, that kind of thing, you know, and on the honeymoon. Yeah. Uh, but we just kind of, uh, you know, as we wrote on that introduction, we kind of screwed around with some goofy things uh, at first, but then we found our way into CrossFit that really, you know, at least in my, in my world really helped uh, really get my, me into the best shape of my life um, when I started CrossFit. But um, we didn't really start eating differently until a few years later. And that's when I really saw a change, not only in my body, but in my, in my health. Mm. Um, well, let's think about it. Well, when you define that health, I mean, you're an oncology doctor, so this yeah. is a whole different demographic, right? But you said you started noticing things. I, I, yeah. I don't like to breeze over that because people mm -hmm. are like, oh, well, yeah, I'm focused on weight loss. I'm like, actually, weight loss should be the last thing you're worried about. But I get it. Some people need yeah. to see that physical representation, mm -hmm. right? But what are some of those health impacts that you noticed initially and maybe as the, as the journey grows? Because I think it's important yeah. people to hear this stuff. Yeah, well, I would say, um, and before we just gloss over, you know, I think weight was certainly one of them uh, for most of my life. You know, when James knew me, when we first met in high school, you know, um, you're only seeing me from the waist up, but yeah. on my website, you see other pictures of me. I was an offensive lineman in high school. I mean, I, I was a, I was a, you know, a, <laughs> a bigger guy. I was kind of sluggish. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really saw a major change in my body composition. Um, when I started eating primarily. So you didn't culture. always look this dashing in your, in your doctor photo? <laughs> yeah. I, I got to say, great yeah. shot, by the way. Hey, you know, it's very professional. Um, yeah. Did you do this yourself or did no, you have the hospital I, hook you up? That was, that was one of the headshots they gave me when I started oh. looking there. Okay. Yeah. And, that well, and then the, obviously, boom. Yeah. That's, now you, you, look, you look, actually, if I had to look at head, headshots because years ago I was a bartender and a bouncer, uh -huh. so I'm good at facial recognition, you definitely look leaner here. Yes. Than even, even that doctor photo. Well, yeah. So that's a great point. Um, so that, um, and we can get into that. It's one thing I would like to talk about is on intermittent fasting. And we mm. can get into that in a minute or two. Um, but uh, yeah, that picture you showed my headshot or whatever, that's circa 2013, I think. Yeah. Um, Which so, again, you look fine. Yeah. But. I was into paleo primal at that point, but really um, have kind of taken it just to the next level. Um, over the last few years. So it, it's, it's really a journey, you know, and I think that that's, again, part of the motivation for this website was that you're going to come across things, you're going to hear things, and you, you, you adopt them. And you, you, the other big, um, what's the word I'm looking for here, uh, theme that I have is, you know, your N equals one experiment. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you hear something on a podcast or whatever, there's no better way than to try it yourself. Because a lot of the stuff we talk about, again, from the medical doctor perspective, a lot of the stuff you're going to hear about, you know, in my world, we always look for the randomized control trial. You know, that's the, that is the, uh, the heart of it. And, you know, it's really hard to prove most of these things we're going to talk about in that setting because they can't be done. In fact, most of the diet, exercise, intervention types of studies that are done are retrospective. Um, or they're done based on surveys and things like that. So really, that's the frustrating part because yeah. a lot of MDs do not want to talk about this stuff because they know there's a there's a risk, right? Right. Because oh, I'm not a certified you know dietitian, which unless they have one on staff, okay, great. They maybe they could bring them in, but let's be real, I've I've called this out. Not all dietitians have a clue. I mean, <laughs> believe. <laughs> uh, no offense to uh, I know some of the ones you've had on your show are um, you know I, I think we're perhaps we're more aligned um, in our Oh, yeah, like uh, or, uh, our regular Aaron Sparrow, for example. Right. She's actually very knowledgeable because she's not a – well, she's a nutritionist, not a dietitian. Right. But she's right. already yeah. learned to break away from the SAD diet, the standard right. American diet. Right. I mean, these are the same people who will put a diabetic patient on a, on a diet that's high carbohydrate and low yeah. fat, which we know is – Wrong. Really not the best thing for a diabetic to be eating. Um, but, you know, anyhow, we digress. But uh, yeah. Well, uh, back to your own. This is actually on the same theme. You brought the N1 experiment, right? Like yeah. I pride myself on being an N1. I was like, oh, you don't believe me? I, I do it. But so I, we did, we helped make sure we didn't gloss over, but let's rewind back to your N1 experiment, you, right? What were some of those healthy things you started feeling or noticing yeah. when you started your journey? 
so as I mentioned, um, you know, there was some weight loss initially. Um, body composition is another thing that can change even without weight loss. So I think first I noticed the weight loss. And that was from probably 2011 to 2013. But since that time, I've really not lost any more weight, but I've noticed, as you pointed out, a change in, in body composition, which is, um, I think, just as important. You know, you want to you look good, you want to feel good. Um, Can I pause on that? Yeah, yeah. Because I've been doing this for a while, too. Yeah. And the one thing I realized was my weight hardly ever changes, right? I mean, once you get to the where you and I are yeah, at, yeah. I might bounce between 190, 195. You eventually figure out what your sweet spot is. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot to get me to shift 10 pounds in either direction. Like right. I haven't seen 200 plus in a long, long, long time. Right, right. And so the biggest thing I like trying to teach people is maybe initially you need that short win, so you're gonna get on that scale. Mm -hmm. But the sooner you could throw that scale away and focus on measurements, mm -hmm. tied to your point here, body comp, right, is okay, you're a doctor. You understand that inflammation is killing America and everywhere around the world. And I found that when you change your body comp, what's happening here is you're relieving inflammation as well if you're doing the right things. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling we're, you definitely could help us dig deeper into some of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing, just to kind of go kind of chronologically, um, we, we mentioned the weight loss, body comp. Um, another thing is energy level. Um, That's what I was waiting to hear too. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, you know, we were talking earlier about our mutual love for espresso, but you know, I, I don't, I, I enjoy it, but I don't need it. But you don't need it. Right. It's constant. I mean, there are some days where you need it, right. And you're on call overnight and you know, it's been a long one, but generally speaking, it's, um, it's just a, a guilty pleasure, but my energy level is phenomenal and, um, and my sleep is good. And that's another thing you're, you're wearing your, uh, blue blocker glasses now and, and you circadian know, rhythm. Yeah, absolutely. And so we know that the, the uh, photoreceptors in the eye, you know, they, they, they change with the time of day and the circadian rhythm. Um, they're more sensitive to blue light at night um, than they are during the day. Ooh. And that can, that can really alter your, your sleep. So I want to make sure our listeners know that, yeah, I highly promote blue blocker glasses, right? I'm wearing them right now for the video watchers, but I don't want to see you go buy a pair of blue blocker glasses right now. I want you to focus on what we're hearing from the doc because you hinted at something earlier. You've done residency, huh? Okay, you've done internship. And usually during those periods, doctors, nurses, because I have friends in all those uh, fields, everybody goes through the all night 16 hour shifts. Oh. Like, for example, this past weekend, you, you earlier had asked me about my ski trip this weekend to the Tuckerman Ravine in New Hampshire. Well, we stopped in Massachusetts to catch up with a buddy of mine. He's a very successful uh, scientist, and his wife is a young doctor, and she's in her residency phase. Yeah. yeah. And she just got done doing a 16 hour shift when she met us for dinner. And I'm like, Oh my God, it's so unhealthy, right? It is. It is. It's, it's so unhealthy. unhealthy. Um, you know, they've made a lot of changes because not only is it unhealthy, but it's probably not really the picture of Safe. safety for, you know, but, um, you know, well, her, her brain looks fried. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah well, they she are. was not talking right. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, it's terrible. And, um, you can ask James about some of the, the stories from when, I was in Denver. In fact, that year, which was 2008, 2009, was the last year that the, um, you know, the federal agency that oversees um, medical residencies, that they allowed the 30-hour overnight shift. So we would go to work at um, 7 a.m. and we would leave at 1 p.m. the next day. Um, okay, what, 24 hours wasn't enough? <laughs> right, right. And that's how it was. It's how it still is. Actually, they don't allow that in your first year, but in your second year, you can do that still. <laughs> Wait, what, what's the new quota now? For the first year guys, they go soft and I think they're limited to 24. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, well, you see, that goes back to my firefighting. That's when I started geeking out about this stuff too, because as a hotshot out West, we were doing 16 hour shifts. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I had, I thought, Oh, this is what, this is what heroes do or whatever. Yeah. Like I'm just going to do whatever I'm told. But then at the end of that summer, Doing 2,000 hours in six months, which if you guys are doing 24s, I don't even know what you guys do in six months. But, you know, we did two weeks straight, 16-hour shifts a day. Mm -hmm. Now, years later, I can now look back. I'm like, okay, now I know why my energies were getting all weird after that fire season. Like, it took me months to reset my body right? because my circadian rhythm was off. I had, here's the key words, which you can probably dig into for weight gain, is accumulated exhaustion. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is all tied together, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I wish um, at that phase of my life, I was uh, more in tune. But, you know, the thing is, 
back in your firefighting days and my intern days, you know, we were younger. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to speak for you, but back then, you know, a lot of us were, you know, like going out and partying. So on top of all that, you would do that and you'd go drink, you know, and it was, it was really put a lot of abuse on our bodies. And I think even compared to a lot of my, my friends, I was one of the healthy ones, you know, yeah. and it's just crazy, you know? It's yeah. Crazy. I think the only advantage of being the healthy football guy, like you, uh, you know, the, the, the athlete looking guy is that, okay, you probably were able to, I guess, weather that storm a little yeah. bit healthier in your 20s. Yes. I were. didn't do the firefighting until my 30s. Oh, wow. I, I was the old guy. So, but I was kicking the crap out of the 20 year olds because I already knew enough. <laughs> uh -huh. I wasn't drinking as much. I, I was in my 20s. So I was like, right. I didn't drink as much as the other guys did. And mm -hmm. I knew enough about recovery. I was already like, I'd already been a spinning instructor and uh -huh. a ski coach. So I already been around, like you said, health, health and fitness. Mm -hmm. If you have a little knowledge around it, it helps. Yeah. But a lot of our listeners don't, haven't done what you've done, sports, haven't done what I've done. So I think it's important for them to hear that even guys like us still struggle. The struggle's real. Yeah, <laughs> it's real, man. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, that, that's that little tidbit. But yeah, in the medical profession, and like you said, even there's, there's many other ones where we, and really, I mean, the, the, the people who work in the hospital now, the nurse, some of these people do it voluntarily. I mean, I had to do it for a year. Because they care. That's right. the sad well, part is that they're just trying. I know a lot yeah. of nurses, they just, they, yeah. they want to, I have a good, good, good friend of mine. She's an oncology nurse. Uh -huh. And she was burning herself out. She loved her patients so much. And you know, working in oncology, and she was at a you know, oncology dedicated facility. I mean, some of her patients are not going to survive, unfortunately. Yeah. And she knows it, but yet still would get torn up, tears, you know, the long hours, the relationships that are built, you know, they're taught mm -hmm. to not, you know, get connected. But when you spend that much time with your patients, like you guys do, it, I think it happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, in our field, you, you definitely have to uh, take care of more than just your, your body. You got to take care of your mind and spirit too. And that's mm -hmm. important. Well, that comes back to your brand. I mean, I love the fact you keep tying stuff with your, with your site here back to family, right? It's not just, it's bigger than just that word family. It's, right. it's the connectivity back to your point, the mindset and everything. Right. But anyway, so back, back to our point here, like you, you already hit, we got weight loss, body comp, energy level, sleep, anything else that you just like, whoa, this is, this is hitting like, this is we're we're, we're winning. We're moving in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, I think those are the, those are the real big ones for me. Cool. Um, I think when it comes to, um, you know, again, as a, as a physician, um, the, I would say the, the, the sort of fifth one I would put on there is, you know, not just body comp, but then what are the statistics, you know, right? Uh, what is your, uh, mm -hmm. your biomarkers doing your, your markers of inflammation? Um, what are your, what is your cholesterol doing? Um, your blood pressure. I had a post on my blog, um, you know, uh, that, that your listeners can check out. Um, despite being in what I would have considered to be, you know, certainly not optimal health, but in, in good health, um, I had high blood pressure and all throughout medical school residency. And, um, I was taking a pill, you know, pill, one pill a day. Kind oh, of the, the pill band aid. Yeah. But I mean, you know, as a, as an MD, you know, it, it didn't bat, bat an eye at that. I thought, okay, you know, this is what happens. You get put on a pill and I mean, here I was, um, you know, I think I started taking it when I was like 25, you know, wow. I'm going to be on this for the rest of my life. But, you know, I went and had all the testing done and they said, yeah, I know we did every, we looked at everything and everything is fine. This is probably just genetic, you know? And I hmm. said, yeah, well, my dad has high blood pressure. And so we just sort of let it go. And, um, then when I started losing more weight and, and, and again, I didn't think I was overweight. I thought I was fine. Right. Um, but really kind of, cranked on the paleo thing, got in better shape. Um, it started messing with intermittent fasting. Um, next thing you know, I, I decided this was about two years ago. Um, after I had done my intermittent fasting experiment, um, I said, I'm going to see what happens since I'm an MD. I can do this kind of stuff. Your listeners shouldn't without their doctor's approval. Um, I just took myself off of the pain, uh, off of the, uh, uh the, uh, blood pressure medicine and, Lo and we also knew how to monitor that. Well, sure, sure, sure. Right. And again, since I am a doctor, I, I felt like I could yeah. do it. Um, but yeah. And you I, made and yourself I, your own patient. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, in that monitored setting, I took myself off of it, monitored it, and haven't gone back since. So that's kind of a cool thing, um, you know, for me. The other thing um, that I noticed was 
and again, without getting too, as you like to say, geeking out too much on it, a lot of people are concerned about cholesterol, right? It's the one you hear about. And, and you know, Lipitor at one point was the most prescribed drug in the world. Oh, I got into a healthy debate on the seven plus hour drive back from New Hampshire with my ski buddy this weekend because he couldn't understand why I, I wanted him to take a photo of me doing shots of olive oil on the side of the mountain because I love my healthy fats and that my fuel in the morning, because normally I, I extend my fasted state like you, but I, uh, I put down steak, eggs, side of bacon and sausage because I'm fat adapted and I want a good long energy and he's ordering a hoagie yeah, that, he, yeah. that, he's, that he's putting in his backpack uh, so he can eat it on the side of the mountain. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? So I, I figured you'd appreciate sure thought, this. I'm sure he thought you were crazy, right? Oh, um, yeah. He's literally, he, he was upset because I didn't eat his friend's um, buckwheat. Uh, yeah. Because these guys are from like Eastern Europe, they're bloodlines. And oh. he's like, you don't understand. Entire armies survived on the healthy proteins from buckwheat. And I was like, Great, I'm not in the World War One or World War Two, yeah. and I have access to healthier sources of proteins, fats, and healthy cholesterol. So I'm going to go ahead and just disagree with you. Like you do you, and I'll do me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, be your be your own end of one experiment. And, yeah. and you know that's the thing is is don't stick your head in the sand, right? If it's not paleo primal, whatever, um, it's not for everybody. And mm -hmm. there are some people who are going to eat that way, and they're going to eat a high fat diet. And they may see their cholesterol rise to what even, um, you know, the, of course, what not just the conventional medical establishment would consider a, a high or unsafe level, but even what, you know, the, the primal MDs would consider to be a high or unsafe level. Well, here's the question. What kind of what high is, are we talking exactly. about? Exactly. And right? so I think that that's one of those areas. And this is where I, I struggle a little bit because um, while I'm pretty familiar with the data, the trouble is there's not there's not an answer to that question. You know, we know that cholesterol um, is not a be all and end all that, that mm -hmm. your doctor probably thinks that it is. Um, we know that LDL cholesterol is not by any means the, the, the strongest predictor of heart disease that, that some people years ago thought that it was. Um, but it still is important. You know, we, we know it's still associated, um, but we're learning more and more that inflammation is probably the root cause behind this mm -hmm. and that inflammation is certainly tied into cancer. Um, so, well, and, the, yeah. and the plaque in the arterial walls that are clogging the arteries is not cholesterol. It's an inflammatory response to what else is going on in your lifestyle. Right. So that plaque is inflammation. It's right. not from cholesterol. Cholesterol is like a lubricant almost without me being a doctor. <laughs> right. Well, you know, those, those plaques, um, there can be cholesterol plaques in the artery that are not a harm to you. Mm -hmm. It's when that plaque gets inflamed. And so right. it's like, well, why does it get inflamed? Did it just randomly get inflamed or? Which, uh, you know. With your art, was it the best kind of medicine? Is that the blog article that you were talking about earlier on your site? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Because I brought that up. I wasn't. I didn't get a chance to read that one, but I'm going to go ahead and share that for our video watchers. Again, go to the site. You know, our our health habit, and go back. But best kind of medicines. Name it. Nice little pill on the plate. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because one of my buddies' podcasts. He's got a very successful show on the West Coast. He brings on a regular uh, nurse who she's trained and certified in how to read. The, the blood tests, like the cholesterol and everything. And she said, the biggest thing that you need to do that most doctors aren't doing, and I'm interested to see if you know about this or not, is they're not ordering a, I might be saying it wrong, but a particle test, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Because it's not just about the LDL and HDL. She's like, no, 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 no. It's the particle size. Right. And I guess this is like deeper testing. Have you done some of that on yourself? Um, I haven't. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm going to, and uh, maybe we can revisit that question. Um, so oh, we I, will. I, and I'll do it with you if I have to. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, so what you're referring to is with the standard um, cholesterol test, what you're reported on your, on, when you get that printout, you're going to have your HDL, which is the good cholesterol. You're going to have your LDL, and it's called the LDL-C, LDL-C. And that's LDL calculated. And that's what they're doing. They're using a formula um, from your total cholesterol, and they're calculating what your um, LDL cholesterol is. There is a higher level test. I think it uses something like NMR spectroscopy or something that can actually calculate the LDLP or the LDL particle number. Mm. And there yeah, are that's even, what she's talking about. There are even subtypes of LDL particle numbers. So the, the bottom line is 
Um, and there, there are some excellent resources out there. And again, I don't, I'm an oncologist. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a cardiologist. Um, you know, and granted, I wouldn't necessarily want this advice from a cardiologist because most of them would just want to stick you on Lipitor and call at the end of the day. Wait, um, wait, hold on. Statins aren't the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, although there is some interesting new data actually in the cancer world that I just read this week about statins potentially being beneficial in cancer, but that would be- uh, don't help them justify that drug anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, no, again, Again, in fact, just to touch on it, since we're, we're talking about it, um, statins, um, we, we know that their, um, uh, their benefit has been probably widely overblown, but it's more and more data is coming out about it. And, and the reason that in some studies that they're causing a, um, a survival advantage may actually be because they reduce inflammation. So right. yeah, they, yeah, they reduce cholesterol, but it turns out that they also reduce inflammation. And that may be the key factor. And that's fine. Initially, we can, we can we can reduce inflammation in other ways. Right. So. Thank you. Right. I mean, exactly. you and I are, are going to get deeper into that now. But yeah. I mean, like my own father, I think it's important to tie. Like I'm, I take this stuff seriously. Like my mother told me, she's like, oh, yeah. He, he's like, yeah. He went back in for some updated testing, and the doctor didn't like his uh, out of his cholesterol or what it was. And and but long story short, because he's already type two diabetic, and he's like, you know what? I'm worried about your pressure, your blood pressure. So the doctor immediately wanted to put him on a statin. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's it? Because you're worried about his blood pressure, you're just automatically going to put him on a statin, let alone the side effects. I mean, let alone he's already on one pharma, pharma, pharma drug for diabetes. Like, I've had a sister who suffered from depression her whole life. I know about the cocktails, all the different pharma drugs cross-referencing each other and messing it. i like, dude, no, you're not adding another drug into his solution. Let's look at ways to reduce his inflammation and see if his blood pressure goes down. So cutting back on the excessive sugar intake, cutting back on the excessive grain intake. I'm a huge advocate for no sugars, no grains, cutting that way back. That's just me. I don't right. know about you. I don't know where you weigh in on that. But um, I'm, I'm totally in your camp with the, uh, <laughs> with the one exception that, I, you know, you hear this stuff said, you know, like sugar's like a drug, you know. I, I totally agree. Um, and, I, you know, I, I, I can't sit here and claim to be uh, no sugar. Um, because, Hey, I still enjoy it like the next guy, but I I look at it like a drug, you know, I look at it and say, Hey, I'm going to eat this. There's there's proven chemical reactions from the brain, which is why it is. They say it's, it's been proven more addictive in most cases than cocaine. Now, granted, and one, I haven't tried cocaine. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, I really can't speak to that. And even if you did, you couldn't (laughs) say it, right? Um, yeah, no. So I, um, uh, I totally agree with you. In fact, I read a book, um, again, I, I don't, purport to be some kind of expert on this. Most of the stuff I learned, I did not learn in my medical training. I learned it on my own. We, you and I and other people were reading books. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, so to that end, I think um, a, a great resource for your listeners, if they haven't, Gary Taubes, um, The Case oh, yeah. Against Sugar. Um, he's got several books. That's his most recent. Um, Nina Teichholz. Um, Ty, Ty Schultz. Ty yeah. Schultz, yeah. Um, it's called The Big, the Fat, Big Fat Surprise. Surprise. Fabulous book. So, I mean, I learned a lot from these people. They spent years, probably multiple years of their life working on these. These are, these are important works because these people aren't physicians. Um, and yet I feel that they have done a much better job of analyzing the data than their research. The medical community, the medical yeah. community has. Um, so it's, Wouldn't it's you agree cool. that a doctor has a career to do? So it's very rare that a, a, you know, a, a public-facing doctor can then turn themselves into a full-time researcher. So it takes people like Nina and, and other people to take, say, great, I'm not doing that. I'm going to focus on research and well, digging into this. Well, yeah. and, and again, as much as we, we physicians would like to avoid conflicts of interest, most of the research dollars out there, they're either going to be from a big you know, NIH grant or something, um, or they're going to be from a pharmaceutical company. And guess yeah. what? If you're, if you're taking pharmaceutical company research dollars, you know, you're, you're going to have some sorts of bias. Kind of jaded, kind of yeah. jaded. Yeah. And, and again, even speaking to the other problem, if you're taking, you know, non-pharma dollars, you're taking it from a foundation or from the government uh, grant. The, the trouble is in the medical research community, there is, there's a couple of problems. Um, one of them is that there is a, the, the peer review bias, right? All the people who are reviewing your, your paper or your research, they're probably deeply entrenched in that you know mainstream, and so when you come up with this um, this contrarian idea, and you're trying to get it published in a peer-reviewed journal, they they say this is garbage, this is nonsense. 
hmm. uh, because you're refuting their life's work. Um, so this, this is an interesting, um, an interesting problem. Okay. Well, so if somebody's listening to this right now, and again, I, I tell people all the time, I, well, I don't try and tell people to like ignore your doctor. But what I tell people is, if you don't like what your doctor's telling you, literally get a second opinion. Like yeah. find a different doctor. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is it, is it that easy sometimes? I mean, yeah. Like I said, sometimes, right? You might stumble across the right one. Um, the trouble is, I'll tell you from, you know, I went through medical school and residency and granted I'm an oncologist. And in, in that case, I'm a specialized oncologist in radiation oncology. But it, when it comes to, you know, a lot of the stuff we're talking about, when you're talking about cholesterol and, and, and uh, dietary advice, we don't learn that. St- we, we learn the basic mainstream stuff in medical school. Yeah. If you there went is, back, there's no, there's no alternative theories that are taught. You, you learn what's in the textbook and that's it. Right. And, and if you went back, because I've been told by, I've had an ER doctor on here. I've had a, a bunch of different doctors. I've gotten everything from, yeah, you get a few hours of coursework around nutrition to how things metabolize in the body, yada, yada, yada. That's about it to upwards of a maximum of a hundred hours. And if you think about the entire career or the educational career of an MD while in the university, even if you got a full hundred hours, that's not a lot of time, Mm -mm, mm -mm. right? Well, yeah. And then the trouble is uh, too, Scott, like, let's say you did get a hundred or even, you know, 5,000 hours, but like, what are they teaching you, right? Is it going to be the, the, the dietitian who's telling me that my diabetic patients need to eat the ADA, American Diabetic Association diet, which is, which is like 80% carbohydrate? Yeah. You have a disease of carbohydrate metabolism and they're telling you to eat more. Um, and so, you know, it, it's kind of like even if we did increase it, what do we, is it going to be more? Well, more because they want you to increase the heart healthy grains. grains. And I'm like, Old grains. it's yeah. still a carbohydrate. Right. It's funny because people, Turns into people, glucose when you eat people it. look at our, our lifestyle, right? And they're like, um, yeah, so yeah, Scott's Mr. Anti-Carb. And I said, I eat a lot of carbs. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, I eat vegetables. Right. Whole different carbohydrate, my friend. And people don't get that. From, uh, from kale is not necessarily low carb, but it, you know, it, doesn't have any, uh, it, it doesn't have any nearly the same glucose spike. In fact, no. one of the, one of the um, interesting blog posts I wrote recently was about my own challenge. So again, I like to do my own, you know, sort of experiments. Um, and I'll tell you about a few of them. One of these was uh, what's called the seven day carb test. Hmm. And this was something written about by Rob Wolf. I'm sure you, you've heard of Rob. I Wolf. have heard of that one. I, I was like, as soon as you said it, I'm like, wait a minute. I know that one. <laughs> so Rob Wolf was like one of the original paleo diet gurus. Um, he's written multiple New York time bestsellers and, um, uh, his, his, in his most recent book, um, he talks about this seven day carb test. So I decided to do it myself and, and you know, give it a try. And so basically what you're doing, which, which article was that the, um, how well do you handle carbohydrates? Yes. Yeah. It was either that one or the one that came right after it. Um, I kind of oh. did a, a sort of a, cause this is that one. And I noticed yes. you got, you got your little glucose meter. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So look at you. That's, a, that's literally the seven day carb test. So what you do is you eat 50 grams of a particular type of carbohydrate and you have to eat like a pure source of that carbohydrate. Um, so for instance, when I ate um, 50 grams of, as you're looking at, you're zooming in on day four, which was the day I did white potatoes. Oh. So, so 50 grams of white potatoes. And again, you're doing this scientifically, right? So it, it, they have to be dry. You're not, you can't put any butter or cream in there. You can't do any, I, I put a little bit of salt, yeah. but that's it. Yeah. You can't okay. throw off the, the, the natural sugar ratio or whatever with fats, right? Cause Ooh. fats will help slow down the metabol the, uh, so the metabolizing the, 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 the body. The key issue is, is the insulin secretion, right? So hmm. if you eat a meal of carbohydrate with some fat, well, that modulates your insulin, your insulin secretion. But so in this case, I was in a, a fasted state for at least 12 hours prior. I did this first thing in the morning. And I ate 50, and I usually, since I've been into intermittent fasting, I, I usually skip breakfast. But here so I am two drinking, cups. Or eating two cups of, of, um, of baked white potatoes, and I felt terrible. And at one hour, my glucose was up to 131, which isn't really like terribly high. Um, but I felt terrible after eating that. And I mean, like literally blurry vision, bloating. I think I, it actually says here, I feel like crap. Is yeah. that right? <laughs> Although I something 
I feel like crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and I wrote in my you're, you're looking at the diary. I was actually I love keeping, it, but I wrote a whole blog post on it. And and you know the truth is it it really messed with me. And um, just one day prior, there you go. I ate um, or maybe it was yeah it was one day prior. I ate um, an equivalent amount of carbohydrate from black beans. Right. And my insulin spike was very different. And my um, you know the way I felt was um, was much better. Hmm. Um, I personally don't eat a lot of beans, but at least I know I can, um, I can handle them. You know? Yeah. Like so, honestly, I'm not a bean guy either, but for example, I love chili. I make venison chili. I make elk chili. I mean, you name it, I will make a chili out of meat. And that's, uh, that's truly <laughs> grass fed meat right there. You know, elk and venison. Oh yeah. Well, after living in Arizona and Colorado, you, you learn where the good stuff comes from. And right. here on the East coast, it's kind of hard to come by that stuff. So if I, if I can come across it, game on. Yep. But then, yeah, some people like to have beans in their chili. So to appease the masses, yes, I'll throw some beans in. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I'm very selective on my beans. I've done a lentil chili already too. But Right. Yeah. yeah. That was um that was supposed to be part of my test, but I didn't make it that far. I think I stopped it um, seven days. I was going to do 10 days. Of <laughs> but you got tired of feeling like crap? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> even then um, I ate, I ate, a, I ate 50 grams of blueberries one day. Um, and again, we're not talking about weight of the blueberries. We're talking about um, the blueberries. There you go. 2.5 cups of blueberries. And boy, that is enough to make you turn blue. I mean, it was crazy. I was going to say, that's a lot of blueberries. Yeah. Yeah. And even banana, I mean, both the blueberry, I, this was an interesting experiment for me because um, like some of your friends have accused you of being anti-carb, I've kind of, over the last year or two, have been very, you know, try to eat very low carb. And I think doing this seven-day carb test actually made me realize, like, I don't need to fear the carbs so much. I'm fat adapted and I don't mm -hmm. eat, I don't eat this stuff every day. Right. And that's why I'm. Yeah. When you have a fat adapted, you bounce back faster, right? Exactly. So it's all about insulin sensitivity. And, um, you know, remember insulin is the hormone your body secretes when you eat something with sugar, glucose, um, and you, your body breaks down any carbohydrate into glucose. And so uh, what my body is not used to seeing much glucose come in. And so when I ate 50 grams all at once, it was like all hands on deck. Yeah. Insulin, insulin surged and my body is very insulin sensitive now. So the minute I you know, have that insulin spike, my body responds immediately by dropping my blood sugar back to a normal range. Hmm. Um, so I quote unquote passed the seven day carb test, but it's interesting how not 50 grams of carbohydrate from seven different sources made me feel seven different ways. Um, you know, this is I, something I've been trying to figure out myself because I've been doing the fat, increasing the fat adaptation over the past probably almost two years. And uh, it was funny because this weekend on that ski, this, the, the backcountry ski trip, dude, we were hiking. I mean, I had a 50 pound pack, you know, had my ski boots, ski, you know, skis a frame on the back and I was hiking in a traditional hiking boot with spikes on for the ice. And it was a workout, man. Like you had an hour and 40 minute hike into the ravine then you recharge, you, re, you know, snack up, whatever, throw your ski boots on, and then you hike the, the wall. Mm -hmm. And then once you're at altitude, then you ski down that thing. So, I mean, it's another hour back to you know, civilization. And my buddy was like, afterwards, we were talking about this in the car, right? And he's just like, he's like, you don't know what you're talking about. He's like, your fat adaptation's crap. He's like, you know, you're, he's like, you, you need carbs. He's like, you were bonking. And I'm like, because we're cyclists. So we understand, I mean, in the cycling world, you're bonking. I'm like, no, I set a realistic pace and yes, you're spiking ahead of me, but you're reaching in your pockets, grabbing snacks. Gel. Yeah. I wasn't, he wasn't a gel guy, but I mean, you had your bread hoagie. So yeah, you might've like had a quick turbo charge off of the bread being processed in your body, but over the long haul, right. my energy tanks have a longer burn even. cycle. Yeah. They're even. Yeah. yeah. And, and Absolutely. I noticed that in my own, my, my wife and I both, we do all these OCR races where, you know, we laugh, we see that the people they hit the three mile mark and they're grabbing bananas and we're like, yeah. what are you, you can't eat while you're running. Um, I mean, but you can do. try. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I say you can't, but of course people do. And I just think it's funny because I mean, not only did I not eat on the run, but I didn't eat before the run, you know, so I didn't do like, anything during my Spartan race other than grabbing water. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of funny how, um, and I think there's some people out there who you know, they throw the term around, oh, we're fat adapted. I mean, it, it, it's um, you really need to understand what that means. And okay. the, tr the truth is um, it does take time, right? So I've written posts about, and I've, I certainly have done a, quite a bit of um, fasting, both intermittent and longer fasts. Uh, 
we, we've even done a, a fast as long as five days. Um, which Ooh, I've is, never exceeded a, yeah. a fully fasted state because I've only fasted. water only. Yeah. Oh, wow. Only yeah. water, only two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Very I do, I do a different program. I do nutritional fasting for a uh-huh. maximum of two days, which I'll be doing coming up because yeah, that's a different thing. Wow. I've never yeah. done the five yeah. day fast water. So we wow. can, we can talk about that in a minute. Um, but, um, you know, the bottom line is that you, you can't just, some people say, well, how, how I would, I would die if I tried that. And I'm like, well, you know, actually, you, you, you might, um, you know, mm-hmm. you gotta be ready to do that type of thing because right. you know, the, I think it's the natural human state, right? I, um, my background actually in college was in anthropology. So oh, yeah. you know, I've studied human evolution. I know a thing or two about it. There's no doubt in my mind that human beings were not meant to have food every two to three hours, right? It just wasn't possible. In, Which in, let's be real. I tried that, right? I mean, I used to read all the fitness mags. I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, I'll switch to the six meal program thing. Yeah. And again, N1, try it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, you're here, you are because you, you've, you've learned, right? But, um, you know, the, the bottom line is you, you've got to become fat adapted. If your body is used to using glucose as energy, as fuel, and you starve it of that, you will bonk, right? Mm-hmm. But you and I, I mean, um, so as part when I did this five-day fast, um, on, by the end of the second day, so 48 hours with nothing in my body except water, we went and did spin class. Yeah. And we went in there and we're like, um, are we doing something stupid? You know, and I was a little cautious about it. And we felt well, totally normal. Totally. Now, prior to this five day, let's be clear for the audience. Yes. You had already been experimenting Absolutely. with intermittent fasting, everything for else. So this is not a cold turkey. Hey, no, I'm no. going to go get into this. Yeah. Do not. Let me emphasize that. Do not do that. Yes. Um, even if you are fat adapted and you want to experiment with intermittent fasting, um, as I kind of wrote about on my blog, you know, start with the, the first thing to do. People have asked me that actually. How do I get into it? Well, I'd say the first thing you do is you skip breakfast. How do you feel, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you're if you're just just sitting at your desk, like wondering when you're going to eat lunch, you're not fat adapted. No, um, and, and that's temporary, by the way. Absolutely. That, that that once you get used to that, your body actually absolutely moves forward. <laughs> it does. It does. It moves forward. And guess what? You're not you're not um, you're not miserable. Um, people ask about it all the time. How hungry did you get? Well, after about a day, you know, you really don't feel that hungry anymore. Um, yeah. And so you start with skipping breakfast, then you go to 24 hours, you know, you, you eat dinner and then you don't eat dinner to the next dinner. Um, and then you kind of work your way from that. And that's, that's how we did it. We just kind of tried a one day, a two day, and then eventually said, we're, we're going to dive in and do the full five days. So, and you're not doing the five day thing all the time. That's another thing I think it's important for people to do. Yeah. You're experimenting. Yeah. And well, do you um, still do that? Or let, I mean, let's, it's a nice segue into, um, into sort of an area that's near and dear to me, which is, um, you know, cancer and cancer prevention. So I spent all my day treating patients with cancer. Um, and we all know, what you can do to prevent cancer, uh, what you and I, what the common person can do. You can avoid, um, you can avoid cigarette smoke. You can avoid or minimize alcohol um, and other toxins, right? Uh, or as your guest referred to it, toxicants. Uh, yes. I'm not really, I, I wasn't. Oh, Nisha, yeah. There's a, there's a difference, but anyhow, um, commonly known as toxins, you know, poisons, right? You know, if you work in a chemical factory, these things have been shown to, um, to cause cancer. But, you know, above and beyond that, um, avoid ex- exposure to radiation, right? There's not a hell of a lot that we can do to avoid cancer. Um, right. you know, I mean, you know, at least common that are, that are firmly known, right. That are firmly known. Is it true that it's naturally occurring in the body? It's just dormant. I don't know. Is that a thing? I've read you that know, somewhere. I was it, like, it, really? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I know one of your other guests was talking about that. And this, this is an area where I, as a, you know, trained, you know, like I said, classically trained, in fact, you know, like right through the standard medical system, I'm not an alternative practitioner. So I will admit that my, perhaps my notions of cancer biology are a bit more um, you know, classical in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I do believe, and I think we all understand that cancer is a, um, a normal part of physiology. I mean, cells go awry. That's what cancer is. It's unregulated cell growth. Mm-hmm. And um, I think we all know that, that, you know, the body has mechanisms to repair damaged cells that are constantly going through and fixing mutated cells. And when you go in the sun and you get a sunburn, you suffer, your, your DNA is damaged by the sun and your body has the capability to repair itself. And, and also, if you're in a fully healthy state, which most people are not, doesn't the body also learn from that and also start a reprogramming process? Because I've also read and studied about how our DNA 
literally throughout the history of mankind has shown the history of being able to reprogram itself over time. But nowadays it's like, if you want to start reprogramming your DNA, it's, this is, we're, we're, we're maybe going too far down a rabbit hole in this one, but I do believe that we can literally reprogram our genetics. And I've read about well, this too. You know, I, 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 I that's a term <laughs> that I, I, again, um, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that term, you know, okay. Reprogram the genetics or, or the using the word reprogram the, the term reprogram genetics, because okay. I, I don't think that that can be done. Right. I mean, uh, the genetic code is something that's in your, you know, you it's, it's written in your body. Right. I don't right. know. I don't know how you're going to reprogram it. I guess, um, and, and I've, some of the, my favorite authors have used that term. I just, you know, Mark Sisson, who's a, the guy who oh, yeah. kind of founded the whole primal diet, which got me into this. He, he uses that term and I, it's always bugged me. And it's just because, um, I think what we're talking about or what, what the authors are actually meaning is how to, um, perhaps promote optimal gene expression. Mm -hmm. Um, you're not necessarily re recoding your DNA or anything like that, but you're, you're, you're basically living life how we were meant to live life, you know, op uh, optimal gene expression. Um, so, is, so preventing the activation per se of possible cancer, right? Like it's like, okay, well, if you live this lifestyle, you are increasing the chances of activating or creating more of these damaged cells. But if right. you, if you live optimally and healthy, you're helping fight that. I mean, or, you know, and, and the trouble is when we get into this realm, it, it, it <sighs> It's, it's almost like pseudoscience because uh, it's something I'm very interested in, but we don't have a lot of really good, solid scientific ways of describing this. Mm. Okay. And that, and that's a trouble where I, you know, sort of the nexus that I'm at as a, you know, an oncologist, a medical practitioner, but also somebody who's interested in um, and really believes that most of our um, of society's problems and most of our health problems can be fixed um, through diet exercise and avoiding you know the common toxins i think this is that rub between the whole eastern medicine western medicine too mm -hmm. because we call western medicine you know oh well that's the that's the traditional medicine but depending on who you talk to they say well actually the modern medicine that we use here in the usa you know what you're trained on mm -hmm. only goes back you know so far i mean right. if you want to use the word traditional that just means in this country. But they say, right. if you actually look at the true definition of traditional medicine or traditional health, like, this is going back centuries, right? Absolutely. So, so interesting. Yeah. So, um, you know, we were kind of segueing, um, but, you know, it, initially just talking about, um, gosh, how do we even get there, Scott? <laughs> hey, this happens, man. You listen yeah. to the show, you know. I mean, yeah. sometimes we fall down a different rabbit hole. We went down um, rabbit hole on that which, one. by the way, on a side note, just to close up the genetic thing. Yeah. Um, James already texted me saying that apparently you and I need to talk on another show about 23 and me. Ah, yes. Cuz I have my data. It just okay. arrived last week. Oh, and cool. apparently you geek out on that too. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, unfortunately, um 23 and me has caused a lot of um a lot of issues for um for us <laughs> oncologists um and you know, it, it, I think it has some value. Um, and we can talk, like you said, maybe at another, another conversation about that one, cause that's a whole topic in and of itself, but just to touch briefly on it, as it relates to oncology, the recent tests that were approved for, um, you know, like uh, patient, patients can just order their own, um, test and, and find out quote unquote, whether they're at risk for breast cancer. Right. And it turns out that it's only testing like a portion of the genes. Yeah. That, that I don't agree with. That, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I write about that too. And I'm like, eh that's not what I want out of this test. Yeah. I want to understand more about my ancestry mm -hmm. and I want to understand, I just want to see what they're producing with the health data. Cause I did the double kit. I want you give me the ancestry plus the health. And actually I didn't even know you could actually export all the raw data, which I did because in two days I'll be recording, bringing back on Dr. Anthony J who wrote the book Estrogeneration. So he talks about estrogenetics and, and like the influence on uh, like, for example, like he's Mr. Anti-plastic. Mm -hmm. how it influences the hormones, all that stuff. So he's actually literally studying all of my raw data right now. Okay. So I'm interested to see what he comes back and tells me versus how oncology, we could, we could have some fun with this. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and just for your own, uh, uh, on this one, I, I remember um, listening to Rhonda Patrick. Uh, we mentioned her yeah. talking offline um, in, in her blog and website. Um, she has, I believe, some tools for um, analyzing 23andMe data. So you might want to look at that as well. Yeah, actually, I remember listening to her episode on, um, oh, the other famous podcaster. 
Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. That's how I found her was Joe Rogan. Yes. And she, I think she's been on his show actually a few times. <laughs> yeah. uh, but back to the core of like health. And, and I think before we got down the genetic rabbit hole, we were really the big picture here is about the healthy lifestyle, the fit lifestyle to help bef- before we have to fall down the disease rabbit hole, right? It's right. going back to this core lifestyle. Right. And I, and I, you can look at, um, you know, uh, the history of health in, in, in this country and, you know, just look back, uh, you know, this was, again, I'm kind of borrowing this one from Gary Taubes. If you, if you read his recent book, the case against sugar, you know, it kind of starts off talking about, um, the history of diabetes in the United States. And if you go back like a hundred years, which he did and looking at like case logs from Johns Hopkins hospital, in, you know, one of these famous hospitals in Baltimore, you know, there was literally back then, it was like three or four people a year with diabetes. And it was, it was the kind of thing they had a grand rounds on. It's like, Oh, everybody gather around. We have a diabetic. And remember back then they, they actually tasted the urine. That's actually how the name diabetes mellitus came about. Yeah. That's weird that's by true. the way, but totally I, true. Um, but yeah, I don't want to be that N1 experiment. <laughs> you no, know, no, don't, hey, don't do that as your end of one. But um, you know, and just to think of how far we've come, we're used to be four cases a year now and it's one in four Americans, you know, and it's, it's crazy. I mean, it really is. Um, and you can look at what's changed in a hundred years and, um, it bothers me because I've heard people say, oh, you know, we're evolving. We're not evolving. Okay. The human species does not evolve in a hundred years. No. This is, this is damage that has been done to us. And yeah. Exp- exponential damage. Ex- exponential. And, you know, perhaps the jury is still out on what the damage is, but I would agree with Gary and all the data he presents that really the, the enemy is, um, is sugar. Um, and, you know, we, we could talk for hours about that and, and I'd have to reference a lot of the, the, the studies, but you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty convinced um, both from what I've read and in my own life, seeing the um, not only my, my own health um, improve, seeing my own uh, health parameters improve my cholesterol, my blood pressure, everything um, get better by eating a uh, cleaner, healthier, primal diet, um, maintaining um, a decent level of exercise. And um, you know, to me, that's, uh, that's really what it's all about. And I'm just trying to share that mes- message with as many people as I can. Yeah. Well, I think that's what, I mean, you've, we've name dropped so many different people on the show today. I mean, I wrote them on the board here because I want to take notes for this for your blog post when I post your show. But, you know, Gary Taubes, Rhonda Patrick, Nina Ty Schultz, I mean, people have, I've had on the show, Anthony J. In the end, each person has their own niche, their mm-hmm. own focus, their own education. And one thing that I promote all the time to people is like, listen, Maybe you're not a blog reader, which again, I recommend, you know, go check out his blog guys, you know, ourhealthhabit.com. But also, okay, maybe you don't want to read a book. Maybe you want to listen to a book. Maybe you want to watch it on YouTube. There's no excuses anymore for us to literally become our own inner physicians and start doing some of the self study. Mm-hmm. That's what I usually am trying to preach. It sounds like you're, you and I are on a lot of the same pages, which is why James wanted us, wanted us to connect up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, mean, yeah with, I mean, I wish, I wish more of my colleagues would, um, would be more open-minded. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of us, we don't learn it in medical well, school. And a lot of us, you know, we, we go into our field. Uh, I mean, I'm, in, I'm an oncologist, but I obviously have interests in other areas like diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Um, but a lot of people, they, they get into their, their, their field of expertise and they, they just stick with the mainstream and they never open their eyes. The, the blinders go the on. Blinders, the blinders are on. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I joke around about how, when I was younger, trying to figure out my career, all, a lot of my friends were like, Oh, we're just going to become engineers. And I'm like, great. And they're like, they're like, yeah, you got to specialize. And now years later, I'm now 40 and I'm like, I am so glad I never specialized because if and when crap hits the fan, I could pick up and change careers, change industries, and do whatever I want to do. And I'm not worried about it. Like people who get too, the blinders on, it's, it's risky. It's, mm-hmm. you got to at least be a little open-minded because to your point, the system's broken, man. It's not working. Okay. Absolutely. We need to start thinking outside the box here. Yeah. And I think you, you mentioned, you hit the high point, you know, all, all of us out here in the blogosphere, putting, putting that content out there, helping people to inform themselves. Um, I don't want people to go out there and think, Oh, that, that Dr. Prendergast you had on there, you know, he was his own doctor. Okay. Well, but I am, you know, uh, <laughs> and um, 
don't, you know, you gotta, you gotta do these kind of things. You know, you don't want to start doing these longer fasts without medical supervision. You don't want to take yourself off of medication without your doctor's approval. All of that stuff is easy to say, but the truth is a lot of people, you know, they're going to, their doctor's going to say, no, that guy you heard on the internet, he's a quack, you know, and I used to be that way, you know, so it's, it's really hard to, um, it's really hard, you know, and I don't have an answer for, for a lot of people out there other than, like you said, keep your eyes and ears open and find somebody who will listen to you. Well, I think it's, there's other, have you ever heard about the famous uh, from South Africa, Dr. Timothy Noakes? Yes. Right. Yes. By the way, we've been trying to get him on the show. He's had okay. to reschedule like two or three times. I can't wait to finally get him on the show. Yes. Um, I literally flew to South Africa in November and brought my podcast gear with me on vacation, hoping to just lock him down for a meeting in person. Uh-huh. Uh, so we're doing, the, we're doing it this way. Okay. The point is, he's coming on. He actually just emailed me last week. I'm sorry I had to reschedule. We're going to get this done. So that said, people like him, right? He got chastised in another country because – Somebody set him up on Twitter because he advised a, a nursing mother to cut the sugar and increase a healthy fats diet, right? I remember that, yeah. And in the end, it was just the wrong – I'm not going to get into that case. That's a whole other podcast. Right. The big right. picture here is that you, you did a great job for our listeners, helping them understand, listen, you do have to be your own inner physician. If it doesn't sound like you're hearing the right stuff – and you don't have to agree with Brendan. You don't have to agree with me because I'm not a doctor. But in the end, I'm my own inner physician. I know more than most of my doctors that I've ever met with, which is why I really don't go to the doctor anymore. <laughs> I go see a chiropractor. I go see a masseuse. And people are like, what do you mean you don't see a doctor anymore? I'm like, what do I need to go for? Right. Well, like unfortunately, now, we're, we're in danger. We, as in the medical profession, are in danger of losing our place as um, the, the guardians of health. We're, we've now more or less been relegated to um, the fixers of disease, mm-hmm. but we're not, we're not the keepers of health. Um, but that's, that's what it. you guys were, were yeah. if, if you go far enough back, and that's the sad part, people like yourself care that much where it's like, guys, that's why you guys got into the profession to yeah. begin with. Yeah, preventative <laughs> medicine is almost—it's almost a, a dead, a dead thing. Um, and I, and I, and I will, um, you know, kind of step back and say, you know, again, I, I look at a lot of the data, a lot of the science, a lot of the stuff that's thrown around on podcasts, and, and any, you know, hey, I run a blog. I'm not a. This is not a science blog. It's my personal blog, right? Yeah. And, and that's the trouble is there. Anybody can go on the internet and say anything they want. And, um, so, so you have to be careful if your own inner physician, you, yeah, I want to caution the other side of that, which is, you know, don't believe everything you read. Sure. Um, if you do your own N equals one experiment, don't dive in without be careful, it. right? Yeah. Yep. Do your research, take it slow, start low and go slow. Um, make sure you know what you're doing. Um, but again, you know, as, as I put on my blog, be a disciple of experience. If that's, that's something that, you know, Leonardo da Vinci said, and if you, um, if you've done something and it's working for you just because it's not conventional wisdom, just because your doctor says, Oh, you have to eat less than, you know, what is the American heart association mm. say? We have to eat uh, less than 10% of saturated fat. I don't know. I don't, the only time I read that site now is when somebody tells me something stupid went yeah, up and I, yeah. then I go read it. <laughs> right. Right. So, you know, um, it works for you. You drink olive oil, you know, your cardiologist, if you had one would think that's crazy, mm-hmm. but I bet your numbers look pretty good. I mean, I, I guess I, I mean, I don't have a cardiologist because I donate blood every eight weeks. They're going to let me know because I get a free, I get a free health report back on that blood after a donation. They mail, mail to me in the mail and I'm like, Hey, it looks good. <laughs> still a rock star. Every time I go there, the, I've already called a blood taker, blood taking people. Phlebo- phlebotomist. Thank you. I can never yeah. say that word. Uh, she's just like, are you like a, an athlete or something? And I said, yeah, you know, I get around. I mean, I do some things, <laughs> you know, but in the end, it's like when they see somebody like me go in there, they love working on me because my blood flows so well and my stats are off the charts. Like I'm going to go donate this week because I just got back doing the high altitude skiing. Right. So yeah. I know that my blood is like awesome right now. So I want to give that to somebody else. Plus right. I love getting an oil change, you know, there you go. There you so that's go. it. It's like, these are all the side effects also of living a healthier lifestyle. You want to give back, you don't have to give money. Go get blood. That's a great. That's a great point. Like, how sad is it if you are so unhealthy that you can't donate blood? I, I, I've always, I never thought about that before, but that actually would frustrate the hell out of me because I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, that's a yeah. great service. You know, it's it's scary. But hey, we we've been at this for a while. So yeah. Um, and actually, I'm gonna just do one more screen share because back to your point on don't do some of these drastic changes without some guidance. 
besides obviously doing the doctor guidance as well, especially if you're already working with a doctor. But that's another reason why health coaches exist, okay? And I'm going to plug Rachel here, what she's trying to do. Uh, you, guys, you guys have this in the blog. You have coaching programs on here. And yeah, I do health coaching on the side too. But in the end, let's, let's, let's blow her up because clearly yeah. you two are both healthy people. You're fit people. And that's kind of the point of a health coach too, is to help guide a little bit and direct people in the right direction. Yeah, that's the main, um, the main thing Rachel offers. In fact, she does do uh, remote coaching. Um, so if there's anybody out there um, who's interested, you know, um, connect with us on the, through the blog, fill out the, uh, the form. She'll connect with you and see if we can help. I like the discovery form. That's a great key word on there. So yes. yeah, so I like that share, a lot. Share a little bit of information about yourself and, um, and, and uh, it comes to us and, we'll reach back out to you. Well, and that's a great way to kind of bring the show to a close as well. Also is the, is the, you just mentioned the fact that nowadays we talked about books and everything else. Like there's no excuse not to start learning and don't feel too overwhelmed. And also the beauty of the technology and the internet, you and I have the ability to reach out to each other and record a show to hopefully bring new content out to the digital space, right? It's, this is free content, totally right? Free. Mm -hmm. Well, the beauty of coaching is now there's no excuse. You can't say, oh, well, I'm in the middle of nowhere and there's no good health coaches nearby. Mm -hmm. Okay, then just go to ourhealthhabit.com or somebody else and find an online coach because you could do it over the phone. You could do Absolutely. it over the internet. You could yeah. do it over video like you and I are doing right now. There's no right. excuse. It's the power of technology. You really can harness it for good, especially yeah. if you got your, your blue blocker glasses on, right? That's it, man. I, that's it. I'm going to start a whole coaching program on just wearing your blue blocker glasses. Um, well, I, I have way too many. This has been a lot of fun. Um, yeah. uh, as I, as I told you, uh, before the show started, it's my first, uh, experience on a podcast. So thanks for having me as a guest. It's been an honor. I mean, yeah. actually, I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air, but, um, if you have listened to the show before, I want to give the co-host the final closing thoughts. So all encompassing man, our, you know, your website, everything. Like what is the biggest mission right now between you and Rachel, since you're doing this as a couple, like, is there an all encompassing message that you want to leave behind the audience? Because if they forget everything else, we obviously we talked about today because we covered a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess, I guess it would be kind of coming back to what I said, um, which is, you know, don't just trust conventional wisdom. Um, look at what's working for people and, um, find out what they're doing if it sounds unconventional, but it's working, it, it might be worth listening to. Um, and I think that that's, um, you, know, I, you know, just to kind of back up, we, 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 hit, we hit on this. I talked about how the, the diabetes epidemic and everything has blown up in this country. But, you know, just think about how things were 100 years ago. Think about how they were 5,000 years ago. We didn't have the, the level of uh, disease and illness that we have today. Did, did we still get sick? Yeah. It, we're all going to get sick and die eventually, Scott, you know, unfortunately, as much as I'm into longevity, um, you know, it's, in, it's inevitable, right? But I think we can improve um, not just our lifespan, but our health span. And I think that we are in control of that, not 100%, um, but um, certainly a lot more than people think. And, um, you know, now's the time to start, whether you're in your 20s doing firefighting, or whether in medical school or residency, or whether you're in your 50s and and overweight or obese and diabetic, um, you know, it's never too late to start. You can turn things around. I like that. Life is only as short as what we make it. Uh, that's how I look at it too. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, listen, I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, I could not have asked for a better co-host to bring you guys today. So again, shout out to James for getting us connected. Um, I will probably see him at our next Hero Watt on Sunday. Uh, but again, that's Dr. Brendan, man. I mean, we're bringing you guys some great influencers. Check him out at OurHealthHabit.com. And as we've said before, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you too can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon. And you're free of the pod. This is just right. extra video. So okay. I hope you had fun. We went a little long. I knew that it's always happening. Um, yeah. And that's why, because I want to make sure you know, like, honestly, especially because you're a friend of James too, Let's, if there's other content you want to get out there, the door is open. And especially yeah. like if he, he thinks you really want to geek out on 23 and me. So if that's something you really want to do, I told him, I don't care about HIPAA. I will sign off. It's my, <laughs> it's my, it's my podcast. I can talk uh -huh. about whatever I want. Uh -huh. So I don't, I don't have anything to hide. I want well, to get it. I want to get it out there. I mean, I guess from a, 
uh, you have my email. It might be something, I guess uh, maybe James thinks I'm more of an expert on 23 and me than I am. Um, <laughs> but it would be a good learn. I, at least I could give you my perspective on it. You yeah. know what I mean? Have you done um, your own? No, I haven't. Oh. I, I might decide to do it. it. You know, here's the thing, man. In medicine, we have a, um, we have a saying or a, a philosophy, which is you don't order a test or a lab or an x-ray or a, you don't order a test unless you know what you're going to do with the result. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what you learn in medical school year one. That's, that's, that's first year stuff. And I, I think it, it kind of comes back to the Pandora's box question. Um, you know, if I get this test done and it says something, what, what am I going to do with that? You know, it, it's one thing if we're doing it as a blogger and you're saying, Oh, this is what mine shows. And here's what I'm, you know, that may be a good enough answer for you. But for mm -hmm. me, it's kind of like, well, what if it says you have some, you know, 5% chance you have this, this pancreatic cancer gene that you, what are you going to do? Are you, are you going to go have a scan every, every year for the rest of your life? Because no. some, you know, so again, I started thinking like, do I even want this information? And, and again, that's, that's my background. You know, that's my background in, in, in medicine. And again, I don't, some guy comes in and says, you know, um, Oh, I doc, I want you to run um, this test on me. I, I, I oftentimes will say no, because if, you know, if your whatever level is a little high, what am I going to do about it? You know, I, True. Uh, so that, that's my bias. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you've got your results and you want to send them to me, I, I'd be happy to read them over and like dissect them and give you my input on it. Oh yeah. And, and you're right about these all third party sites. Like my future sister-in-law, she, she's like, Oh, I geek out on this stuff too. You got uh, There's a site called maximizegenetics.com, And they'll tell you if you have your, what is it called? The MTFR or whatever that acronym is about. M about F yeah, MTFR, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, it, it, and that's a free site. I was able to upload my data and I was green, I was fine. Mm -hmm. But they do, they, you can actually buy um, advanced uh, methylation panels and... Again, you know, yeah, it's, it's like crazy. What are you going to do with that? But yeah, I mean, if we ever chat again, I'd like to get, um, you know, we could get deeper into the, because we didn't even get to talk much about cancer. Um, I know you're... No, and, and it, that's where... And I apologize if that was no, a goal I mean, of yours. Absolutely. That's why know, we don't open format it. And that's also why when it's, you're the co-host. So yeah. if there's something specific you really want to dig more heavily into, I actually think this is a great episode. It kind of gets into you as a person mm -hmm. and, and Rachel and your brand. And then we can bring it back on and just go hardcore into cancer and probably, I'm guessing, ketosis and ketogenic and exactly. all that. I was going to say, one, we didn't even get to talk about ketos, uh, ketosis, um, but I, I, yeah, I'd be interested in talking about that and yeah. the way that, because that right now is kind of a, a main, and I haven't blogged about it, we, we will, um, but really the, that's kind of where the, the diet and, can, you know, again, I talked about how there's a lot of pseudoscience out there and people talk about this, that, and the other, but one area where I feel like there is a pretty solid connection between cancer and diet is with um, is with ketosis. Yeah. And well, if you plan on getting that bog up before we get you back on again, yeah, we could time this because then I because when I launch a blog post, I backlink everything to people's you know you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People's websites or all your profiles, everything. Mm -hmm. and so I'd rather make sure we do it where your article's up because right now the keywords of keto, ketogenic, ketosis, these are all buzzwords with cancer right now. So. Mm -hmm. When we launch that show, yeah, let's yeah, make sure yeah. we're driving that traffic to you and your okay. blog, and cool. obviously that article. Yeah, absolutely. That's a little strategy there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, and what I when when do you plan on airing this um, this interview? You will be. I can actually tell you. I just got done updating all the dates. So let's see. We've already got. Uh, I use Trello, so it's good for project management. Let's see. Twelve, thirteen, one, two, three, four. 169 aired yesterday, 170 goes up Friday. So you should be, I think you're about three, four shows out right now. Okay. Yeah. So what do you do? You do it like every Monday and Friday or? Every Monday and Friday I air, yeah. Okay. So, and I've got, and actually I just got done reorganizing them because I was, I had too many health ones going back to bath. I've had a lot of health going on. So I'm trying to cycle in health business, health business to at least rotate that up a little bit. Okay. So the cool thing is you'll be coming up right after this uh, British dude I interviewed from the UK. So, okay. cool. um, but yeah, so you'll, you'll be coming up in literally in the next, I'm usually within about two to three weeks. So everything is usually fresh. Awesome. So that'll also help us if you want to time uh, a return, mm -hmm. we could time that around. I don't know if you plan on getting a, a 
ketogenic related article up, maybe this inspires you to get that going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how it goes. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, if and I want to read that anyway, cause I only know what I've taught myself. I really want to geek and get deeper into the ketogenic stuff. So. Yeah. Hang on one second. I got to turn, turn this, uh, power switch on or else my Mac is going to die on me. <laughs> there we go. That should help. Um, yeah, there we go. I had to get some juice going. No, it's um, cool. But yeah, I, I do appreciate you having me on. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I want to kind of, again, yeah, stupid thing came unplugged. We've been kind of going, um, the nice thing is since it's not like this is an income stream for either of us. No. This is more, um, well, I mean, I guess technically it is for Rachel, but it's, this is just my passion. You know, it's something I'm doing for fun and because I care. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we That's how things start. Yeah, yeah. And we, we haven't been like, you know, pushing the, the social media thing that much. Granted, that's how we publicize. I mean, that's the only way I publicize. But um, I'm going to get up like a, a new Facebook page up because um, right now we, we publicize through our own personal pages, you know? Yeah, it's important to differentiate the brand. I mean, having a Facebook like page right now, it doesn't give you a ton of stuff because Facebook's become a pay-to-play platform. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's your brand presence. And when it comes to SEO, if people Google those three words, mm -hmm. you want to make sure Google's coming up with your website, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Like in the end, you have to own the real estate. That's right. what I tell people. Right. But you can also post things differently. And then if you eventually want to boost and really get exposure on an article or whatever, mm -hmm. it's easier for cross tag. I can get it. This is what I teach people. So Right. Yeah, I saw uh, that on your website. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, right now, like I said, I mean, again, it started as, you know, husband and wife, just something fun to do. Um, and uh, it's kind of, you know, we're, we both feel strongly about it. And so anyhow. Um, well, and I think she, if she doesn't have one now, she should figure out a way to have a brand within a brand, right? Coach right. Rachel, or or maybe she runs all the coaching from the same Facebook page. And you guys just start that way. Or you have two Facebook pages where one is the core of you, you and her together. Mm -hmm. But if you guys are always going to doing everything together anyway, then just have it run the coaching through the same Facebook page and yeah, have it, have it listed because yeah. then it stays consistent with this is going to be the main site always. Yeah. Too. Because I mean, again, I, I feel like I have no interest in, you know, whatever monetizing the, uh, the content of our page. It's don't just, need to. I, right. It, but, but I think, you know, if it, if anything, if it steers people towards her, then, then great. You know, the most important thing about blogging and podcasting is it shows you putting out free content, valuable content and, you don't care about that piece, but then the side effect of that is like, I don't monetize the podcast. I've actually had new coaching clients come from that. Mm -hmm. So it's about cross pollination. Right. So you can technically self monetize without trying, mm -hmm. but it takes time. Yeah. Like right now you're content generating the podcast. I've been content generating, yeah. but now like my SEO is growing because of all that content that's going through my site. Right. That's what you're in. You're in the builder mode. Yep. You're building yep. the brand. Yeah. And especially if she's a health nut, if she's not doing something on Instagram, you got to do it. Okay. If she's always doing healthy meal, you you're right now viral, man, ketogenic keto, those hashtags on Instagram. If you guys are always doing healthy cooking, healthy food mm -hmm. tips, whatever. Okay. Telling you that's going to be, that's going to be her niche right there. Okay. I see a lot of health coaches really succeeding and uh, growing their brand on Instagram. It's much more successful right now than growing your brand on Facebook. Okay. Still have the real estate though. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll do both. But um, yeah. well, thanks so much again for having me on. I, I appreciate you uh, taking the <laughs> taking the chance on a guy you don't even know. But hey, um, you know, I, I, I believe in networking, and yeah. if James trusts you, I trust him. I mean, he and I got to play with chainsaws in his backyard, so uh, I figured if we could bond over that, I could trust a, a fellow college, you know, old college buddy of his, or well, yeah. really high school buddy. High so. school buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Great guy. I, I got done. I did a coaching call with him, helping him launching his his woodcraft. Thing. Yeah, and um, so I had no like, idea he was a wood guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think he always was. This is something new. But he yeah. um, he just sent me a uh, my wife and I just had our ten year anniversary last week. Wow, congrats! And, uh, thanks, man. And so he just sent me a uh, our anniversary present, which was our family initial, a big P, you know, in the wood circle. He he hinted that he might be doing one for me because we're getting married next art March. Oh, so. Awesome. You know, it would uh, look really good on that wall right behind you next to your little bike thing there. Yeah. That, well, because another wood, wood buddy of mine made that, and that actually, uh, he had carved into it, it says, live the fuel with flames on it. Oh, cool. And then he, he wrote a quote on the back because he's a good friend of mine from the mountain biking world, and he's one of my biggest fans of the podcast as well, and he's a good guy. So he's like, he just made that for me. So I, awesome. 
I just show off like that's my first fan gift. <laughs> yeah, maybe James so. can make you a um, like a, your logo in the wood circle. Now, I told him I'm like if he's feeling fancy, I was like I'll pay you for that. So. Yeah. I was like, you need, to, you need to get paid for this stuff. He's good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. good deal, man. Well, anyway. um, will you email me or something when it goes up, or or how? Do I you... always do. Yeah. Okay, cool. So if your email that you provided me in the onboarding form. Yeah. That I when I launch it, I will send out. Hey, here's your short link. Here's the full URL link. And then if you beat me to the punch in social media, which is rare, then I will. Sh I usually share. If somebody beat me to the post, I'll take that post and cross share it back to my feeds because I believe in giving back. But if, if I get it up before you, then it, gives, it makes it easier for you guys to sharing too. Awesome. So, um, yeah, trust me. Emails always go out. I always notify when the show goes live. Okay, cool, man. Well, thanks yeah. again. All right, well, it's been Be great. Touch. And uh, hey, maybe one of the future episodes, uh, it's you and Rachel. Who knows? Okay, yeah, so, that'd be fun. Cool. Right? Cool. Especially if she, if she, I'm sure she can geek out on keto. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would be fun. <laughs> All right, awesome. man. All right, thanks again. It's been yeah. awesome. Have a great right. night. Bye, you too.